Hi, this is Steve Conklin, AI4QR, and this is the second uh, video that I've done talking about XNEC2C and how to model antennas with that. Now, uh, t we're going to talk today a little bit about the file formats, the input uh, parameters that go into the antenna model, and uh, information about this. The uh, easiest way to find it is to go to AI4QR.com, which is my web page. And from there, I'm going to link uh, the videos and any support information, which will be on my blog, and I can update that as needed. Now, if you didn't haven't already fetched the uh, antenna models that I use as examples, you'll need to pull those from the Git repository. I keep them on GitHub, and uh, we do that with this git clone uh, command that's on the screen now. And it's not a very big repository, it'll pull very quickly, and there we are. Now, if you have this from last time, I've changed a few files in it, uh, you'll need to update that and get the very latest. And you do that by, uh, once you're in the directory with the antenna modeling files, you uh, git pull origin master, and uh, I'm already up to date, but if you weren't at this point, it would have updated it for you. Now, if you look in this directory, two things of note here. One is this uh, NEC2PRT3 PDF file, which is the uh, sort of user manual for these input data files. Some of the things in that, that's very old, and actually documents the card format file from when it was an old Fortran uh, card deck application. Some are not supported by XNEC2C, but the, the reference cards are uh, all well documented on that. And the other thing is that I've written a script in uh, dump NEC that dumps these cards, uh, these, I'm sorry, these uh, input files out in a uh, human readable form so that you can see what the, the various card fields mean because they, they change card to card. We'll talk about that in a second. Now I'm going to open uh, the example I'm going to use is this vertical sample.nec and uh, you can open that in any text editor and this is the entire file. It consists of a comment section which is the first two lines, comment begin and comment end. You can have as many comment lines as you want uh, but they all have to be at the beginning of the file. What we're going to talk about today is uh, the geometry of the antenna, how the wires are defined. We have one wire in this antenna, and it's with a geometry wire card and then an end card. And then we're going to talk about the uh, ground plane definition, which is uh, down here. And that's about all we're going to have time for today. Now, the first card in the geometry section uh, defines a wire, this vertical antenna is one single wire. The first field in this is a, a wire number, a tag that is referenced by other cards, other lines in this file. The second is uh, the number of segments in this wire. The, the modeling software divides a wire up into segments to run the analysis on. The more segments you have, typically the more accurate the simulation is, but within limits. Um, the lower bound is about a tenth of a wavelength per segment. You don't want to uh, have your segments longer than that. Um, this is a quarter wave vertical antenna, and we're dividing it into 32 segments, which is 128 segments per wavelength, so each one is smaller than a hundredth of a wavelength, so we're well, uh, well under the limit here. And complex antennas sometimes need more uh, smaller segments. The next field after the number of segments, the next three fields are the beginning of the wire in uh, X, Y, and Z coordinates. And it begins at the origin, 0, 0, 0. The next three fields are the end of the wire which is x is 0, y is 0, and z is 7.5 meters. So this is a 7.5 meter tall wire. The last field in this is the, di the radius, excuse me, the radius of the uh, wire. So 
this is 25 millimeters radius. Uh, 25 millimeters is about an inch, so this is about a two inch uh, mast, quarter inch, uh, quarter wavelength uh, antenna. The geometry definition for the antenna ends with a GE card, and the only field that's uh, significant on this is this one in the first field after the uh, card name, which tells us that there is a ground plane in use uh, for this model. If you define more than one wire, we'll get into this in a later lesson, and the endpoints for wires are at the same coordinates, then they're considered to be connected together. So all you have to do to connect them is make sure that the ends are at the same point. Now, the ground definition down here is uh, use the first field is a zero and that tells us that we're using something called a finite ground reflection coefficient approximation there are a couple of different uh, three different models that you might want to use one is this finite ground model one is a perfect ground model and uh, the other is um, yet another model that this is good enough for most of what you want to do when you're modeling antennas these models are not terribly accurate in real life due to terrain um, effects on the propagation pattern and a lot of other things but they're useful for investigating different antennas and learning more about it uh, which uh, there's a really really good chapter in the ARRL antenna book and I'll link to that in the blog post about this it tells you why these models aren't perfect and when they break down and which model uh, there's another uh, modeling program that unfortunately is Windows only that can do some things this can't with terrain modeling and there's a very good chapter in that antenna book that describes exactly what I'm going over now which is the data uh, input for the modeling software and it includes a great deal of depth in how to define uh, traps and impedances in the antenna and other things like that. So back to the ground plane uh, definition. Zero is the finite ground model the second field is the number of radial wires that we have radiating out along the ground at the base of the antenna and this is to improve the the ground plane and the propagation and uh, the uh, radiation resistance of the antenna the next two fields don't mean anything for this model the floating point field these two define the parameters of the ground itself the first one is the relative dielectric constant of the ground and the second one is the conductivity of the ground in moles per meter. Now you can get all worried about getting these exactly right for your location uh, but there are maps that show what the average is in different parts of the United States or the, or the world wherever you happen to be and you can use those. It varies quite a bit depending on whether you're on dry sandy soil or over marshland or over over water for example on a coastal installation the next field is the length of the radials the radius of the radial field under the antenna so those 32 wires are each uh, 10 meters long in this case and then this last field uh, for this model is the radius of the um, ground radials which is five millimeters which means the diameter of those wires is 10 millimeters which is uh, pretty thick wires but that's what's used for this this model so we've defined the antenna geometry we told it we're using a ground plane and we defined the ground plane now we're gonna go and fire up the uh, X oops fire up XNEC2C, we'll open that file and we can see that vertical wire that red segment is the excitation, we didn't talk about that but if you look at the excitation uh, card, it's the EX card, you'll see that we're exciting wire number one, or tag number one, which is the only wire there, and segment number one which is the first segment in that wire 
Now if we view the radiation pattern, this is a very typical pattern for a uh, ground plane uh, with a quarter wave dipole above it. And it's omnidirectional, equal in all compass directions, and has an elevated pattern because of the reflections of the waves off of the uh, ground plane. So that showed you how to define a very simple vertical antenna. Uh, next one we'll probably do a dipole or, or a, something with more than one wire and uh, talk about how to model that. But uh, this has been a good, uh, I'm going to try to keep these to 10 minutes. This is a good 10 minute lesson. If you're really deeply interested in this, I highly recommend the ARRL antenna book. And uh, you can also read through that uh, NEC2 PRT3 PDF file and get an idea for the different uh, cards in the deck. And then again, you can use the dump. If you change the, the file, you can use that uh, dump NEC script that I wrote to get an idea of whether you, it's doing what you think you changed or not. So until the next lesson, this is AI4QR. You can find more on my website, and uh, I'll put up a blog post with a link to the antenna book and some other things. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Send me email and feedback, and I'll try to get these out a little more often. Thanks.